What I have here today is a trashed microwave oven uh, that I got scrap from work. What I wanted to do with this one is just make a quick video today on uh, what useful things you can get out of a microwave and how to scrap it to get these useful things out. So let's get set up and let's tear this dead microwave apart. The first thing to do is to remove any case screws that hold the uh, three-sided outer case onto the microwave. They'll often be a combination of Phillips screws, and there's normally, to try and keep you out, a couple of these Torx-type security screws. These, however, uh, can be defeated with vice grips if you don't have uh, a security bit set. Pliers or vice grips will get these out. As you can see. Anyway, I'll remove the rest of the screws and uh, pick up the video. The screws are now removed and it should be uh, fairly easy. You got the top off the microwave, that's that outer shell removed, and now we can see the guts, which are what we want. From the side view here, we can see the magnetron, we can see the microwave oven transformer, we can see the microwave oven diode and the microwave oven's capacitor. Before anything else is done on the salvage, the capacitor should have its two terminals shorted to each other to verify that it has no voltage left stored in it. These capacitors are supposed to have a discharge resistor built into them, but on an old scrap microwave, don't assume that this discharge resistor is working. To verify that your capacitor is discharged, Take a screwdriver with an insulated handle and just slide the tip of the screwdriver so that it's shorting out the capacitor's terminals. This capacitor clearly has nothing in it and will be safe to handle, so we can proceed with the, the disassembly of this microwave. Now that we know the capacitor's safe, there's a screw that uh, holds the diode to the case, usually, in most microwaves. And there's another screw that holds the uh, capacitor's clamp on. So let's take those screws out, and suddenly we freed the capacitor and we freed the microwave oven diode. These are two very useful parts. The microwave oven diode is uh, normally a 5 to 8 kV rated diode, and the capacitor is rated at around 1 microfarad at to 2000 AC volts normally. These are two very useful components for the high voltage experimenter to recover from a microwave. The next major component of interest is the microwave oven transformer itself, which takes your line voltage of 110 or 220 and steps it up to around uh, 2,000 AC volts on the secondary. 
This particular transformer is held in place by four Phillips screws that are on the bottom of the microwave, so I'm going to stand it up on its side and undo the four screws. I will also uh, free the black and the white wire that feed AC to the primary, and I will free the low voltage red filament wires from the magnetron terminals. The wires have been freed from the microwave oven transformer, and I can now undo the four screws, which will allow the transformer to be removed and saved. The four screws that hold the transformer can be seen here, 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 and here. With the screws removed, the microwave oven transformer can now be lifted right out. What we now have removed from the microwave are the three most valuable and useful parts it has to offer to the high voltage experimenter, namely a high voltage diode, high voltage capacitor, and the high voltage transformer. There are still useful parts in this microwave. The line cord itself is useful and it comes into a uh, filtering board that prevents interference from going from the microwave back into the AC line. This is a useful assembly to keep for other projects. Then moving on over, there's the magnetron itself. These aren't the safest things necessarily to play with, the, but if you want the magnetron, grab it. Now on top of the uh, magnetron, there's a little snap disk thermal overload uh, device that can be uh, a handy salvage. And then uh, there's another snap disk thermal overload on this microwave. Another useful uh, bunch of parts are the micro switches for the door interlocks. These can be removed by taking out mounting screws and pulling the wires off them and you'll get a bunch of useful micro switches. Also inside the microwave is its uh, electronic controller board which has a few uh, useful components on it. Uh, you can keep it or not as you wish. With the removal of maybe a dozen and a half more Phillips screws, all of the parts are stripped from this microwave and it only takes a few minutes. You need very little in the way of tools, maybe uh, a small vice grips, a flat screwdriver, and a Phillips screwdriver, and possibly a wire cutting pliers. If you have a cordless drill with a Phillips bit in it, that will speed things up quite a bit for you. Anyway, now that this thing's stripped, let's take a quick look at what we uh, pulled out of it. Let's take a look at our haul uh, from left to right. We have the microwave oven transformer, the microwave oven diode, microwave oven capacitor. We got two thermal snap disks. We have a uh, low RPMs gear motor for the turntable. We have a fan motor with fan blades, still perfectly good. We got the uh, AC power filtering board. It could be useful for something as well. We got two micro switches out of the uh, door assembly. There was a third one, but it broke in half while I was trying to uh, reef it out of there, so oh well. 
We got a 20 watt incandescent light bulb. We got the magnetron itself. And we got the uh, timer board and uh, push buttons and display. I suppose the timer board could be fired up by an experimenter and possibly used to do something else than run a microwave oven. This is the microwave's magnetron, and in it, it has two nice ferrite ring magnets that can be salvaged. However, if you're going to uh, pull this apart to slip those ring magnets out, bear in mind that this insulator here, in this case uh, pink in color, do not break that, for the simple reason that you have no way of knowing whether that's an aluminum oxide insulator, which is fine, or a beryllium oxide insulator. Uh, beryllium oxide is dangerous to your health. It can give you cancer and all sorts of uh, horrible lung problems. If you cause beryllium oxide to break up into dust and happen to inhale some, it's rather nasty. Do not break that insulator. Assume it's beryllium oxide, unless somehow you know absolutely for sure that it's safe. Do not break that insulator when you're removing the magnets. Many microwaves also include their schematic diagram uh, as a label stuck to the inside of the case somewhere. The magnetron is one component that you shouldn't really hook up and attempt to power up and play with. Microwaves can be uh, quite dangerous and unpredictable. The high voltages are also lethally dangerous. Basically, unless you have uh, microwave detection equipment and understand how to uh, shield against microwaves, it might be best to uh, not fire the magnetron up. Just take it very carefully apart for the two useful ring magnets that are in there. I hope you found this video interesting, and as always, there'll be plenty more videos to come.